What's up everyone, Brad here on my YouTube channel, Money Dad. This video is for anyone looking to get started investing in stocks in the stock market. So uh, every once in a while I will get a question from a family or a friend or a coworker asking me, you know, hey, I wanna uh, invest in something, where, where should I put my money? And I thought it would just be easier to make a video that kind of gets everybody introduced into you know what what you should do in, in that scenario uh, and instead of you know onesie twosies having that conversation every time not that I don't enjoy having that conversation because this is a passion of mine I do love having that conversation but sometimes um, people pick up information better through video than they do through audio or reading or whatever so figured I'd make this because it's a common question so um, let's jump into it there's a few things that I would suggest um, someone do before um, they're ready to invest and and before I get into any of this stuff I just want to say these are all my opinions I'm not a financial advisor I am passionate about this topic um, I do feel like I know a little bit about it but uh, not a financial advisor so don't take this as any kind of like official financial advice it's just my opinion this is what I would do um, in this scenario so um, the first thing I would do is look at all of my debts and see if I have any high interest debts and I would look at paying those off first um, and even some of those lower interest debts too maybe except for your mortgage because that's going to take a long time to pay off if, if you have a mortgage um, so credit card debt student loan debt stuff like that that's higher interest absolutely I would look at paying that off first before you consider uh, investing just because those interest rates are so high you're paying so much every month on that stuff that's the first reason the second reason is once you pay that stuff off you're freeing up cash flow uh, right say you have five hundred dollars a month that you pay towards credit cards or student loans or your your car bill um, once that's paid off now you have that five hundred dollars every month to do whatever you want with and you can be using that to invest or to save or whatever you want to do with it right um, so I would highly recommend uh, looking at your debts first and making sure that you are comfortable there right um, and really if we want to get serious with it I would I would really recommend not having any debt other than your mortgage pay everything off first um, after that I would look at if your employer has a program for you to invest in like a 401k or a Roth IRA something like that if they do usually that program is pretty good I would look at kind of the details of it um, what are they charging if they're charging anything um, and the tax implications as well um, but oftentimes those those uh, programs are really good for example if you are military or you are a federal employee you can invest in the TSP the thrift savings plan and the uh, the expenses on that program are so low it's almost nothing it's an extremely good plan compared to what's available to everybody else so I would recommend um, going that route first now the caveat to that is those are retirement accounts you can't touch that money until you are at retirement age um, unless you are okay with taking a penalty you're usually going to lose like 10% of your money and it's going to get taxed um, or, or something like that there's there's different rules depending on the account uh, so I would consider that uh, just because the the um, the benefits there are, are very good uh, but just keep in mind it's a retirement account not an investing uh, uh, an individual investment account right so consider those two things first um, so once you're at this point you said okay um, done all that still want to invest or I'm ready to invest now um, we get to the point where you have to pick a broker a stock broker so who are you gonna go with which company are you gonna use to invest your money through right you're not picking a stock you're picking a company to to invest through um, and this is like this is called a stockbroker so most of these you can just do online these days you can even just do it uh, through an app on your phone depending on um, which how you want to do it um, so there's lots of great brokers I'll pull up a list um, on the screen so I just pulled up an article um, this is I looked at all these articles before I started making this video and kind of vetted them to make sure that they were pretty decent this is at bankrate.com all three of these articles that I'm gonna go over are at bankrate.com um, and this one is the best online brokers for stock trading in 
2022, basically. This list isn't going to change very often. Um, most of these uh, brokers that they list here are are pretty great, and they've been tried and true for a very long time. Uh, Charles Schwab, uh, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, those are probably the, the top ones that, that I would recommend you look into. Um, Robinhood is a, is a newer one, and it's gotten some uh, negative um, you know, uh, people are starting to turn away from it because of some of the things that they've been doing lately. Um, so it is very easy to use Robinhood. They have a great, easy to use app that you can just use from your phone. Um, but, uh, it's a, not as trustworthy, I guess is the word I would use. Uh, so I would look into all of those, um, companies that I mentioned, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, um, I would look into those, and most of them are going to be pretty much the same. Uh, you just It's a website. You go to there. You create an account. Um, you have to connect your bank account, and uh, they're, all of those that I just named are um, trustworthy. They've been around for a very long time. They're great brokers, and they're all pretty much free as well, uh, whereas 10 years ago, we were paying $10 a trade, um, or you might be able to find $5 a trade. Um, if you really looked around today, everything's free, uh, or pennies. So, um, all these companies are going to be just fine. So if you want to go that route using a website, a traditional website, and a, and a lot of these have apps on their, on for, for smartphones now too. Um, so you can go this route and probably still have an app. So for example, I use E-Trade and I know they have an app and it's okay. Uh, it's not the greatest app I've ever used. Um, I have Robinhood as well, and I will say the Robinhood app is way easier to use. It's much more user-friendly for a beginning investor. Even though I don't necessarily recommend using Robinhood, I will admit that their app is very clean and user-friendly, whereas E-Trades is not. Um, I haven't looked into these other companies, their their apps. But if you're going to go the website route, then you don't. the app doesn't really matter as much. Um, so I would look into those, any of those companies are going to be fine. Honestly, they're going to be mostly the same. Um, it's, you know, it's the broker that you're going with to invest, uh, your money through and they're all pretty trustworthy. So once you have picked which broker you're going to use, um, you got to connect your bank account or debit card to this account, um, and move some money over. And then you need to decide what company uh, what stock you're going to invest in, right? What are you going to put your money into? Uh, and here I would recommend um, an index fund because this is not one company. This is a, a basket of companies. It's a lot of companies all in one fund. Um, and this makes it easier to track the entire stock market uh, altogether. Uh, it's less risky than putting all of your money in Apple or Tesla or or Amazon or whatever, putting all your money in one company, um, it's a little less fun, I guess you would say. Um, it's a it is a little bit more fun to you know put your money in Apple and be really committed to that one stock or whatever. But this is um, less risk, right? When we're dealing with your money, uh, and it could potentially be a lot of money. You don't want a lot of risk, right? You want you want to make money without. Uh, the risk of losing money. Now, um, in the real world, that is not easy to do, and, and it is pretty much impossible to do uh, to to make a lot of money without any risk. Um, but we're trying to make as much money here um, with as little risk as possible. And in my opinion, the way to do that is to go through an index fund because this you're putting your money in a basket of stocks, a ton of stocks. So you're diversifying your money across. Uh, lots of different stocks, right? So this article here at bankrate.com uh, gives you the best index funds in, in their opinion uh, for 2022. And again, this this list is not going to change very often depending on the year unless some new great fund comes out. Uh, and anywhere that you see ETF, that means exchange traded fund that just think of it as uh, a fund. So uh, a lot of these funds are going to track the S&P 500, which is a um, is an index. It's got it's the 500 um, largest profitable stocks in the stock market. That's a great index to track. Uh, the Nasdaq is also a, a popular one. Um, 
so you can go down this list and, and read through here. Honestly, if I, if I had to pick some for you right now, um, I would say QQQ. Uh, that's one of my favorite. That is the top 100 uh, largest companies in the NASDAQ. Uh, so I like that one a lot. And then uh, normally, uh, up until maybe a year ago, I would have said SPY because that just tracks the S&P 500. That's a, that's a great index fund to go with because you're put, you're investing your money in the entire S&P 500, which is a good index. Um, so I like SPY a lot. Uh, however, even though this expense ratio down here uh, looks like it's pretty low at $9.50 a year for every $10,000 you invest, so it's 0.095%, that sounds really low. Um, there are actually um, funds out there that do the exact same thing for uh, even less uh, of, a, of a charge, right? So VU, for example, charges 0.03% or $3 a year for every $10,000. So you can go down this list and find um, things that are uh, very similar. IVV is pretty much the same thing as, as VU, right? They both track the S&P 500 and they both charge 0.03%. Um, so all of these are going to be fine. They're, they're going to be, uh, nearly the same thing. They're going to track the S and P 500 or whatever, uh, fund that they're talking about. And they're going to charge you a little bit of money every year. Not very much. Um, so all of these are fine. As long as you're getting your money into an index fund that tracks the S and P 500 or the NASDAQ 100, something like that, then you'll be fine. But um, if you really want to get uh, into the details, you can look at these expense ratios and make sure that it's something pretty low, right? So you've uh, at this point, you've picked your uh, broker, you know, whether that be uh, TD, Ameritrade, E-Trade, whatever, and then you've connected your account, you've uh, brought your money into that broker, you have picked your fund, whether that be uh, VU or QQQ or SPY or whatever. Um, now you go in there and you put your money into that fund, right? You click buy and you buy that fund. Um, so at this point you have invested your money into that fund. You are now invested in the stock market. Congratulations. You've got money in there. Um, you know, hopefully making money over the long term, right? Um, at this point, highly recommend you set whatever broker you're in, find where you can create a recurring payment. So that every month, either once a week or once every two weeks or once a month, um, they, they should have a bunch of options. You, it, it takes more money from your checking account, savings account, debit card, whatever you have connected, and puts it into that stock. Uh, there should be an option where not only does it take that money, maybe let's call it 100 bucks a week or whatever. It takes that $100. Not only does it put it into your brokerage account, but it should put it straight into the stock that you choose, so SPY or whatever, the, the fund that you choose. Um, so look into that, whichever broker that you choose, and get that set up, because that is really the key to amassing a, a good investment account over the long term, right? If you if you set up this account and you put 500 bucks in it, or 1,000 bucks, or $10,000, whatever, however much money you have, and you just buy SPY right now, and then you set it and forget it for five years, that's a good start. Uh, that's a very good start. But um, it should not end there. You should be constantly investing your money, right? You're going to keep working. You're going to keep making money. Um, your income is going to keep rising over the years, right? Hopefully, you're going to get raises or you're going to change jobs and get a, a new, better job that makes more money. You want to keep investing more and more of that money into uh, your investments, in this case, the stock market, um, so that your account just keeps growing right? It, think about it. If, you know, 10 years from now, you're making 10 times as much money at your job. Um, and all you have in that, uh, brokerage account is the $500 plus whatever it's made over the 10 years. That's not going to mean as much now that you're making 10 times as much money, right? You want to keep, um, investing more and more money in the account, especially when you get raises with your job, because, um, that, brokerage account will really start to balloon it will that compound interest will really start to take a massive effect if you keep putting money in there keep keep you know building it up um so that is that that's a that's a big thing right keep adding money in there i cannot stress that enough so i went through 
um, pretty much everything I have for you. Look at your debts, right? Consider your debts first, especially those high interest debts, uh, student loans, credit cards, um, if you have a high interest uh, car bill, things like that. Um, look at your employer's programs, 401k, Roth IRA, TSP, something like that. Consider going through that first uh, because of the benefits there. Then find a broker or a, an app on your phone. I actually didn't, I never showed you the apps, but bankrate.com uh, has a, an article as well. And I will link all these articles down below the video. Um, there's some great apps for saving and investing as well. I'll link all this below. Um, so find a broker or an app, uh, connect your account, find an index fund like SPY, QQQ, VU, VTI, things like that. Um, get your money invested into that fund and then set that recurring payment. That's big, okay? Um, if you guys have any questions about any of this information, if there's something that I was not clear on, um, or you just want more information on something uh, else that maybe I missed in this video, leave a comment down below, or if you know me in real life, just hit me up, uh, ask a question, all right? I think that's all I got for this video. Thank you for sticking around. I will see you in the next one.